Hello fellow book nerds, this is Gabby and let's talk about the most surprising books of 2020. So you might be thinking it's like barely even December and you're already doing this, what about all the books you read in December? That's a very good question but you know I'm a booktuber and this is series so I gotta get on that train. I quite like doing it in December so it's a whole new slate in January and I'm reading a lot of books that I'm excited and I think I'm gonna enjoy but probably not quite gonna make the list. That's why we're gonna be just kicking it off. So we're gonna be doing surprising books in 2020, disappointing books 2020, worst books 2020 and best books 2020. You guessed it, alright? For me surprising books means I either had no expectations or I had low expectations or I thought it was gonna be fine but they really exceeded my expectations, brought something really new to the table that I didn't make, thought I was gonna be getting. Let's just kick it off with our first pick which is The Last Wish by Andrzej Sapkowski. So this is the first book in the Witcher series which is based on the... no, which has a video game that's really popular based on it which is called The Witcher. I actually read this book um, many years ago, I tried reading it, I got like 42 pages in and gave up. But I was reading Eastern European mythology inspired fantasy uh, and for that video I decided to check out this book and I have no regrets. I liked it so much more than I liked it when I read it before. It has a bit of a hard to get used to writing style but once you adjust to the writing style I think that it's a really really good story and also I read it in Polish so English translation might, might be way more accessible in terms of writing. It's just there was a lot of old Polish words used um, and it's just overall it was a bit of a bizarre experience but overall I enjoyed the story yeah that would be my first one this is in the order of like like worst but worst in the best sense and then best in the best sense <laughs> I hope that made sense next up we have Malamander by Thomas Taylor so Malamander is a middle grade story which I again read for a readathon and a reading vlog and this was for Believeathon. I read it quite recently it's a Middle grade following Herbie, who's a lost and founder in this hotel near the sea. Lost and founder is in charge of the lost and found in the hotel. And many, many years back, 12 to be exact, um, there was a baby found in the hotel uh, without her parents and no one really knew what happened to them. And the um, little girl who was lost comes back 12 years later and she approaches Herbie because she believes that he's a lost and founder so he can help her find her parents. It's a wonderful story. I had like no expectations. Yeah, I would say no expectations at all. I chose it because I needed some middle grade because I was participating in Belivathon. I didn't expect I would love it as much as I did. I mean, I've been shouting from the rooftop, uh, rooftops about this book. I don't even know why because when I read it, I was like, yeah, it's good, but it's not like that amazing. But then I just let it like, you know, just stay in my feels and I've realized that it's absolutely brilliant. I really loved it and I'm definitely gonna continue with the sequel. So if you're not sure about middle grade, I would really check out Malamander. Next up we have Mirage, which is a sci-fi novel um, which tells the story of a girl who gets kidnapped on her like naming growing up day ceremony, I can't remember exactly what it was, but she gets kidnapped and she gets taken to the palace to be a decoy for the princess because she looks exactly like the princess. Thus, she's a mirror of the princess. <laughs> I had really very no expectations. Really very no. I had very little any kind of expectations about this. I wasn't sure. The reason I even picked up this book is because I saw the sequels cover and I thought that's pretty. And I was so pleasantly surprised. I absolutely threw through this book. It was just so engaging. It definitely had its downfalls, had some flaws, but even though it had flaws, I still absolutely loved it. I would highly recommend it. The sequel's really good as well. Well, I said it had some limitations and for that I think that everything came a bit too easy to the characters, so if that's something that really bothers you, yeah, it, it happens a lot in this book. I like it when characters work for something where um, character development's earned, where everything just is a bit of a struggle. I don't know, that's just me. Maybe I'm a mean reader. This book didn't really have that. Everything came out a little bit too easy. So that was my one downfall for this book. But otherwise, I really was so surprised as to, as to how much I loved it, how much I wanted to continue, how quickly I read it, everything. I just had no expectations and it still blew it out of the water. Alright, I feel like this next book, it's I had and had not expectations and it met them and it didn't and it over met them. <laughs> so this is Little Fires um, Everywhere by Celeste Ng. This book is like a contemporary fiction novel um, 
based around this town, I would say. It's full of like really rich people. It's like a really rich people town, very, very white. And we follow the main um, family who's like very nuclear, nuclear, nuclear. It's very a nuclear family kind of dynamic. Like everyone's perfect. The daughter's like super, you know, good at school, whatever, whatever. And then we follow Mia and her daughter who are new people entering the town. It's kind of clash between these two groups of people, but also there is a backdrop of a court case where uh, because a um, baby of a Chinese descent was found um, at the fire station. She was put up for adoption and the parents that wanted to adopt her are white and they are very excited to have the baby but then the ma baby's mother um, comes out and claims that she's the mother and she wants her baby back. So that's the backdrop and this really was a story kind of about privilege, well definitely about privilege, definitely about family dynamics, expectations, racism, it had a lot of really really important topics and why I said it was a bit like it, I did have and didn't have expectations is that I thought it would be a very good book because it had a lot of hype around it and everyone said it was so good and now Hulu made a original series I was expecting it to be good but at the same time I'm not big on just fiction writing you know I'm a fantasy reader you know you've, you've been here a while so you know that I'm a fantasy reader first and foremost but then maybe a bit of thriller so I wasn't expecting to love it or for it to have that big of an impact just because it was like a contempor contemporary novel. I don't even know if you call it, con well, actually it was a little bit of a historical fiction. So it said a little bit in the past, so I lied when I said it was contemporary. So yeah, I didn't really expect to enjoy it and be impacted by it as much as I have, but I definitely was really, really involved in the book. I enjoyed it so much. I would highly recommend it to everyone. So that one was a big surprise just because I thought it would be good, but I thought it probably wouldn't be for me. I ended up being totally for me so that's good and also I went to a signing by the author and she was amazing she had so many interesting points and so many interesting discussions going on I was just like damn so that's why I kind of had to read it because I was like she's amazing she has some more books as well so I need to pick them up Oof. next time coming up maybe a surprise to you but it was House of Earth and Blood House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas so this is Sarah J Maas's who's the author of like Throne of Glass series as well as the Card of Thorns and Roses series. So she came up with a brand new um, adult series. So this is her first ever venture into adult. So this world is kind of like alternative Earth, but if Earth were filled with like supernatural creatures. So we follow Bryce who's half bay and she has a best friend who's a werewolf and one day her best friend gets brutally murdered and she has to kind of figure out what happens and she she joins forces with this bad boy fae or is he an angel angel he's an angel yes yeah oh my god it's been so many months since i read this i think he's an angel i don't know anyway it's a very steamy very very steamy romance it's like so long you're like 600 pages or something it's ridiculously long or 800 i don't know it's too long but i enjoyed every moment of it i didn't think i would i was really surprised not seriously i was really surprised because i didn't like throne of glass i mean i read almost all of them but i didn't like them then i didn't like first book in the sarah a uh, court of forms and roses series then i really liked the second one then i didn't like the third one and i didn't bother with the fourth one I had low expectations because I thought I've, I've seen it probably already because her books are a bit repetitive and it holds true, but it was really good. I was so engaged. I had a whole reading vlog when I ended up crying, like sobbing at the end. So, you know, that's how you know a book is good. When it makes you sob like a little baby, I would really recommend it. It was really like... It was a bit repetitive in terms of like every single character of Sarah J Masses is the same character in her every book. So you know, it's, 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 it, we can acknowledge the faults and still say we enjoyed something. And this is me and I was surprised because I didn't, I bought it for a vlog, let's be honest, but I loved it. I really, really did. Next up we have The Last Magician. So this book it used to be quite popular. I used to see it quite a lot, maybe not so much anymore, but the last book is coming out this this year, I think. I don't know exactly where, but this year. The Last Magicians follow Etna, Esta. It's Esta or Etna. Uh, we follow this girl who is from New York in the year 2020, I think, but she can travel through time. And in this world, there's different people with different abilities like hers that are kind of like magic. And 
and she go back she goes back in time to the 1900s somewhere there around there uh new york and she um has to stop well, she has to join a heist and then kind of stop the heist or hijack the heist. I did not expect to love it as much as I did. I think I read it in a day. Honestly, it was so good. I could not put it down. It was absolutely fast-paced, but with complex characters, with complex plot that made sense. And everyone you follow, you really enjoy. I mean, I did. <laughs> yeah, I ended up being like one of the favorite books I read this year. Um, it's not on that list because... I read the sequel after and let me give you a little spoiler for the most disappointing books of the year or the worst, I'm not sure yet. No, most disappointing, yeah. So I think that's why I had a bit of resentment towards the book and I didn't put in the best uh, books of the year, but I did really enjoy it and I will read the third book even, well, let's hope that it's good. Next up we have Daughters of Henry. So I read this when I was doing a video about um, diverse fantasies, so it were, they were all by people of color. And this book is from a Nigerian author, I believe. It's been a while since I read it. But I saw the cover and I absolutely loved it. Can you see the pattern yet? Am I superficial? <laughs> Who can really answer that kind of question? I never hear, hear people talk about it. I think it might be self-published, but I'm not sure. But anyway, I never hear people talk about it. Maybe maybe they talk about it a little, but not like super, super hyped, super, super talked about book by any means. I was cautiously optimistic and I absolutely loved it. I think the ending was really rushed, but the rest of the book was really, really good. Oh, I'm pissed to tell you what it's about. So Daughters of Henry follows two sister twins if that makes sense. Yeah, we have two sisters, they're twins, but they were separated at birth because in this land, the belief is that twins will bring about like the end of the world. But really what happened is that uh, gods were cast down and the gods were supposed to uh, reincarnate in a set of twins. So that's why the urban legend of them bringing doom came from, because basically they have pieces of God in them. And they do have pieces of God in them. And it's about these two sisters. It's about them finding each other, but finding their power, asserting their power, finding out what they even are. And it's really good. I think the strong point of this book was that I had dual perspective, but each perspective was so different. Honestly, like sometimes you have two perspectives or multiple perspectives and you're like, I, I don't even know who's speaking. But these two were completely different, very distinct characters, very powerful and like asserted characters. So I really enjoyed that and I would highly, highly recommend that. I think not enough people read it. And I don't know when the sequel's coming because it's on good reasons like, oh, maybe, maybe not. No, we need the sequel. So you need to read it. Next up, we have a book, I think I read like January or something, but it's amazing. And it's called Girls with Sharp Sticks. I had no, well, I had a little bit of an expectation because Katie from Books with Katie? Katie of Books? Something like that. She read it and she said it was really good. So I was kind of like, it was on my radar because she mentioned it, but I had never heard anyone else talk about it. So I didn't have like super high expectations because I was like, if it was that good, everyone would be talking about it. It's that good and everyone needs to talk about it. Go tell the, my gospel to people. Read Girls with Sharp Sticks. It was so good and so underrated. I don't understand. It's such a brilliant story. So we follow our main character who's go who goes to this all-girls school. And it's kind of like a finishing school. What they do there is basically train girls how to be best women and wives possible. And there's a lot of nefarious, nefarious things going on in this book. It has so much interesting commentary about feminism, about asserting your power as a woman. It's just so brilliantly done and I absolutely loved it. There's a sequel. Apparently it's not as good, but I still got it. I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it. But the first book, brilliant. I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great story about friendship, about girl power, about girl friendship, which is really cool. I would say that the, some of the secondary characters were underdeveloped, but you know what? It's fine because the main character was really cool. And as a group, they were very cool as well. Okay. And now we have the biggest surprise of the year. This is a big deal, you guys. The biggest surprise of the year. I was so shocked. Uh, how much I love this book. It probably should go to best books, but we're just going with here because the surprise was bigger than the, uh, than how good it was. Maybe the surprise was kind of bigger. I just, don't think about it too much. Just, I liked all of these, okay? And this is Beauty Queens by Libba Ray. Beauty Queens follows however many beauty queens who were on a jet going to the beauty pageant. Then the jet 
it falls on a deserted island and a handful of these beauty queens survive and it's about them dealing with being on a deserted island, surviving, growing. It's basically Lord of Flies but it's beauty pageant and it's girls. Yes, but honestly the humor, the, it's, it's kind of like a dark comedy um, or like satire. It's not supposed to be taken very seriously. I feel like I didn't have very high expectations because people were like this garbage that could really hate it. I think I read, I was watching like Emily Fox and she really didn't like it. We don't always agree on everything but when you hear a lot of people not be that hyped about something then you're like okay, no, it's so good. It is so good. I read the audiobook which was absolutely stunning, amazing performance. Every beauty queen had such a distinct personality, voice, everything. The audiobook was such high quality. I mean there was sound effects because like I told you it's all satire so the breaks for like commercials and everything and it was amazingly done brilliant. The audiobook itself is like such a production that you just you have to you have to listen to it. I don't think I ever listened to a better audiobook. It was brilliant, so brilliantly done and fit the story so well. 10 out of 10, I loved it, absolutely just such a good book. It had such a diverse cast, you wouldn't think so but it had such a diverse cast. You would think oh it's all beauty queen so it's all stick figured white girls, Blah. no. There's transgender character, there's people of all kinds of ethnicities, all kinds of sexualities, <sighs> so good. So, uh, uh, why is no one liking beauty queens? Mm. I need people to like it, okay? I don't know why, because there's no sequel or anything, but I just want you to like it, please. All right, that went off on a journey. But I am finished now. Those were the 10 best, no, the 10 most surprising books of 2020 for me. Don't come for me because this is my list so I can do whatever I want with my list. But you can tell me if you agree. I'll allow it, but don't be mean. But <laughs> tell me if you agree. I mean, you guys are never mean. I really, I get almost no mean comments because you guys are amazing. Tell me if you agree. Tell me your number one most surprising books. But yeah, otherwise, I would really subscribe because if you do, you can watch all the other books in this series, which again, this pointing best, worst, I mean, it's gonna be so interesting, it's gonna be so much fun. So I would really subscribe if I were you and I would also really, really appreciate it if you did. My goal for December, well, my goal for 2020 is to hit 550 subscribers. So if you could help me, I would really, really, really appreciate it in all seriousness. But otherwise, if you could comment and like, I would also appreciate that because it, it really gives me a hand and really supports me and I really want to bring the best content possible. I mean, I hope that comes through. So I really appreciate if you guys could support me this way. But that's it from me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!